and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Holly Millennium and I'm a college advice and lifestyle YouTuber. And today I'm telling you why I dropped my sorority. Insert awkward silence here. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Okay, hi. Today's video is on why I dropped my sorority. I technically didn't like drop drop like I dropped I'm early alumni status if that matters but this is why I dropped my sorority so let's get into why I did it first off my rush experience I rushed at the University of Oregon which is that way yes that way <laughs> and um, it was a very interesting week I had no people in my life who had rushed before my parents are Canadian and they don't rush up in Canada I don't think unless you're at UBC there's one sorority but otherwise there is no such thing as Greek life around the world and whatnot. So I had no experience, no idea what the crap I was doing going in the rush. Personally, I was just kind of in it to make friends because I was moving across the United States to go to college. So obviously I wanted more friends who I could just hang out with. So I decided to rush. It was kind of a weird like last minute thing. I never really wanted to rush my entire life. I thought it was stupid throughout high school and then I was like, I don't know when, I was like, I'm gonna rush and my mom was like, cool. So I rushed and I had a very interesting rush week. Um, some of the top houses, <laughs> I don't really want to say this, some of the top houses really base on appearance, who they want in their sororities. Um, I'm, again, I'm not gonna say anything um, about who those sororities were, what chapters, and this is in no way bashing Greek life at UO or Greek life in general. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I um, definitely knew there was a little bit of bias at some houses on based on how I looked and how others looked. Again, I am not your typical sorority girl who like um, is blonde, skinny, brunette, skinny, like very viscoey girl. That's not me. I don't dress like I don't know, in color that often. I'm more of a monochromatic black look kind of person. You know, Holly, I, you really could have just said alternative. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I definitely noticed that right off the bat with some of the houses and obviously I was dropped from them. I really don't care anymore. I mean, it's really shitty that they do that, but obviously I cannot fix things like that unless, um, you know, reform happens and I'll get a little more into that at the end of the video, but I'm just gonna keep going with my rush experience. I actually bid it in to a really great house that I absolutely loved and the people in it and the family I ended up getting and my executive board were amazing. And then this is in no means, this video is not towards them at all. I absolutely love them so much. And I wouldn't, I don't think be here without them. So shout out to you guys. You rock. I'm not mentioning your name because, yeah. <laughs> um, my experience in sorority life was interesting. Obviously not having had any really, any real direction going in. I was kind of stunned by the amount of money you have to pay to be in a sorority. I paid a lot in dues, um, uh, probably a lot less than most of the sororities on campus, but it was a lot. And dues are really based on kind of the size of your campus. So since I was on a bigger campus, I paid a lot more in dues than someone who's probably like at Wichita State or something. And they probably pay around like $46. I paid around like 400, 500, $600 for dues. And the dues breakdown is very interesting. If I, I'll do a video on that if you guys are really interested in that. But um, it was a big financial commitment and quite a lot of time devoted towards philanthropic philanthropic causes which I really liked and then there obviously is a social aspect of it I actually really more or less liked being with my sisters and as well as you know raising money for a great cause um it was pretty great in general this is kind of why I'm segueing into why I left I'm actually not at the University of Oregon anymore I'm at the University of Maine I transferred for some personal reasons that involved the University of Oregon's students. Um, that's as vague as it's gonna get. <laughs> um, personally, it was just some people who I had some issues with and there was some other things that I really don't wanna talk about, but I'll make a story time if people are really interested in this. 
I left due to those reasons and also because tuition was being raised over 20% and I could not pay having to pay so much money per year. So I transferred out to Maine and they didn't have a sorority here with my chapter. They didn't have a PhD with my chapter here. That makes more sense, Holly. Yep. Um, so I actually took the decision upon myself to disaffiliate and become early alumna status for my sorority. I'm actually very grateful that my president and the executive board accepted my disaffiliation and were very nice about me disaffiliating. Personally, um, I've heard some pretty bad horror stories about people disaffiliating and leaving and whatnot. So I was very thankful that my president and the executive board for my sorority were very sweet about it and wished me all the best. But there were uh, there were some other reasons that came about later as to why I kind of wanted to leave. Um, even though I really spent only a year about, about a year in a sorority, um, there were some red flags from other Greek chapters and maybe one or two from my chapter that kind of drove me to not be in Greek life anymore. Um, and those would kind of be the rating of appearance. Um, I thought that was good, Paul. Oh my God. The rating of appearance and kind of just how competitive and um, social climby some of Greek life is. Again, this is not towards Greek life at UO or Greek life in general. This is just some stuff I've experienced or heard of through friends and then Obviously, I'm gonna get into some of the humane stuff too. But um, yeah, it was very interesting knowing that some sororities do rank on appearance. Obviously, I went through that in recruitment. I was ranked on appearance. And um, I think that's kind of a normal thing that happens in Greek life. Obviously, I don't know if my chapter really did that, but I know a few chapters at that school do rank on appearance before you even enter the house, which I believe is some of the stupidest crap I've ever heard. So I wasn't very intrigued with that and the girls, if they don't like how you look or act or, I don't know, have a personality, they can become very um, interesting with you during recruitment and kind of give you that distasteful kind of conversation that you don't want. It's never really like rude or anything. It's more or less like you don't fit in here. This is how you're gonna like know that you're not getting called back or anything. Um, I had those conversations a few times. It was when the girl gets really bored and obviously there's bump groups and all these other things. So you're not really getting the same person to talk to but a lot of opinions and whatnot kind of stick and that's how they rate you. And yeah, I also knew some of the girls were very kind of toxic and social climby, not really for the sorority life and philanthropic aspects but more to raise their social status. Um, obviously that's not everyone, that is just a very small select few hopefully that I know but um yeah and those values also kind of contribute I think out kind of no kind of mirror out here and how Greek life is um I've met a lot of sorority women at my university who are quite um competitive and toxic in a sense I really don't like saying that word but it's just kind of not the best environment and obviously I can't be in sorority life out here because I'm already initiated and I did a different job. I need to stop like touching myself. <laughs> um, but I do get that sense from a lot of people and I've had actually a lot of people tell me that sorority life is very toxic. And when you're in it, you don't really realize it because you know, it's very hidden, I think more or less. And so, um, Kind of being outside the sorority life is very interesting to see um, what kind of is shown by different groups and whatnot. And this is kind of what I'm gonna get into right now. Um, right now there's a huge movement of either abolishing Greek life or reforming it. And it's kind of based on the backing of the Black Lives Matter movement that happened this summer and a lot of racial injustices and human rights issues are being brought to light. Obviously, I'm all for Black Lives Matter and human rights issues and all these wonderful things that need to really come into effect. And I actually did some research and I'm gonna kind of credit these two pages, Abolish Greek Life and then um, Strip Your Letters. This is KU based. But um, Greek Life really does need to reform a lot, um, a lot. I think definitely having a ranking system of P&Ms even before they come in is 
not the best aspect or quality to have as a house or in general as PHA. Sorry, my little... Okay, well, there goes my outline, but <laughs> I just think it's very negative and very kind of opinionated and biased to go in before even meeting someone based on their appearance. So hopefully that changes in the future. I would also hope that more trans women and women of color are accepted into PHA sororities. I know during this week at KU, um, Kappa Delta had a huge um, kind of blowout from their president and vice president of membership with some racially insensitive remarks towards Asian Americans. And I find that completely appalling that um, a sorority woman, someone who has to be based on certain values and ex like basically kind of represent the university in those values would do such a thing. Um, obviously I would like to push for reform for grief life and that is why I've stripped my letters from every social media I have, I don't really support PHA anymore. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a Panhellenic Council. Um, I don't think I'll be supporting them until they really reform on what they're doing because it is quite saddening to see that most sororities can't take a stance on what they want or if there is a huge movement kind of like Black Ma Lives Matter this summer that they can't out and, out and about say we are for black lives and we stand for them. Instead, it's more or less kind of the we see you, we hear you, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So yeah, that's, <laughs> wow, it's a lot. Um, if you are interested in learning more about abolishing the Greek life um, movement, or if you wanna learn more about Strip Your Letters, which is the KU-based Instagram page I'm gonna put here and Abolish Greek Life here. Here are their pages on Instagram. They're actually super amazing and have a lot of research done. And it's pretty awesome to see a lot of the stories and things that have been said and how a lot of questions have been answered. Um, I definitely recommend giving them a little check out if you're interested in even being in Greek life. And I'm just gonna end it, um, this video on the note that it's okay to still be a part of Greek life if you are going to help reform Greek life. Um, personally, I'm I'm in Greek life, but I'm not really in Greek life. Again, I'm an alumna right now. I'm an alumna right now, there we go, words. So I don't really have a say in what chapters can do or not do, um, but I do wish if anybody is in a Panhellenic sorority or even a fraternity, if you're watching this, um, definitely make your voice heard about what you want reformed in the system. The system cannot change unless you speak up. So please, 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 if you see anything wrong in your sorority, fraternity, multicultural sorority, whatever, um, I definitely recommend you speak up and say what you want to happen because change can happen just from one voice. And it's pretty amazing. And I hope this is, and I don't want this to deter you not to rush or anything. There definitely needs to be voices on the inside who are going to reform Greek life, hopefully. And yeah, that's kind of all I have for this video today. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section. I will try to answer all of them if I can. And again, I'm gonna just preface this before I end the video. Um, this is, video in no means is bashing Greek life or any of the schools I mentioned to Greek life. It's just things I've experienced or heard. So um, I'm not bashing the system at either school or in general. I'm just saying there needs to be some things to be fixed. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.